Hey guys, today we're going to be giving some tips and tricks on the upcoming Hardcore Speedrun Challenge. Let's get into it. Honestly, this is going to be a very exciting challenge. If you guys want to know anything about this, go ahead and check Bitverse Andy's video linked below in the description. It's exactly what you guys need to know exactly what's going on for this event. I'm just going to do a quick brief summary. So here it states, all that awaits you is pain heroes. The Bit Heroes Quest speedrun has returned, but it's been corrupted by Dreneth. You have one life only. You are alone in this challenge, no guild, no friends. The moment you call for help, what lurks in the shadows will be the last thing you will ever see. Compete in a two week speedrun ending on September 6th for riches and the honor of calling yourself truly hardcore. I'm not mistaken, there's three different brackets, which is gonna be free to play, pay to play, and NFT. So it's gonna be very competitive all around. So what do I recommend for tips and tricks? First off, go to your settings, and this is gonna be the moment you start your account, okay? You want to disable autopilot on death as a check mark. This is extremely important. Your settings are gonna be probably some of the most important things you do right off the bat. Go to your settings, disable autopilot on death has to be checked, trust me, it is worth it. The moment anyone in your team dies, it will automatically pause if you wanna go auto on that. And it'll pretty much be like, okay, here's a chance for you to either leave, heal yourself or revive yourself. It's very, very nice to have if you're just autoing like basic runs and for some reason you just get exploded out of nowhere. So trust me, a very good setting to have. Okay, going on to the bottom here, you can leave all of this on. This is just cosmetic. You can leave all this on. That's fine. That's fine. I recommend turning off dual requests. I'm not sure if it counts if you lose a duel or not. Just turn them off. You don't want them on. Trust me, you don't. You have no friend requests. You can't have friends. Turn it off because the moment you accept it, even if it's an accident, you're disqualified. So make sure you have that unchecked. Um, world boss requests. You can't play with anyone. Turn it off. Trust me, you want to turn that off. You can't have any of that on. So here you have autopilot. Autopilot pretty much means that if you're not paused, it's gonna keep playing. It's gonna keep going and going and going and going. So I'm gonna personally have it off and manual everything. But if I'm doing stuff that I know I can easily defeat like an older tier for a familiar or something, I'll probably just use the regular auto button. I won't have autopilot turned. So I personally will be turning autopilot off. You can turn on auto enrage. It's gonna help you out. You can turn on reduced effects if you want to have a smoother, faster gameplay. No matter what your device is on, this will help you out. Um, battle text. Battle text is very helpful to see what's going on. So I like having it on personally, but it really depends. I like pairing it with reduced effects. That way it's not too crazy. Um, you don't have to have it on, it's up to you. So overlay status bars. This is very, very important. I recommend you check that for sure. All the way make sure that's checked so it's easy for you guys to see which character on your team is low health high health which one is needing assistance support like uh, needing some support or anything like that so just keep this one on if possible world chat that's up to you i have animations off that's me personally auto persuade with gold now this i have on my main um but i recommend turning it off um it's pretty easy to just you know, take a look at what you're getting, and if you're manually playing, go ahead and do that. If you're going to autoplay, you can go ahead and leave it on. If you're just trying to do something, that's entirely up to you. Just be careful. You don't want to just blow all your gold, because gold is so valuable at the beginning of the game. Just know that. So auto bribe with gems. Depending on how you play and what bracket you're going in, that is entirely up to you. Um, I personally don't even mess with this unless I'm legendary farming in a raid. Um, so just use that with caution. Uh, decline duplicate familiars. I personally like leaving this checked whenever I'm only trying to get epic familiars. It really depends if you're farming for something like Hilarious, you don't want this checked because you're going to need as many rare. It's more than likely, I think they're all rares. As many rares as possible, so it's really up to you. And decline merchants, always have that checked. Get all of these guys off, they really need to fix the merchants. They're terrible in the game right now. Um, decline treasures, the gems are going to help you out. I recommend leaving that unchecked. You can choose whether or not while you're in a dungeon if you want those treasures or not. I think leaving it unchecked would help you guys get the gems. So just make sure that is unchecked. Um, high level on world chat doesn't matter. Tips from defeated. When you defeat, it doesn't matter. You're going to lose anyways. Equip on result screen does not matter. So these are going to be my settings whenever I start. So if you think you're too weak to defeat anybody in PvP, I recommend don't 
even touch PvP. It gives so little experience. I really doubt, at least if you're free to play, I really doubt if you're free to play, you're gonna get 12 callers right off the bat. You know, the tokens are nice because you can turn into more energy. I just recommend avoiding it until you at least have some familiars stabled and you know you can do it. Save PvP for one of the last things that you're going to hit whenever you first start off. Just be very, very careful. That's my personal thing that I'm going to do. You always could just quit, you know, if you're gonna lose. But think about this. There's a lot of players that quit from time to time and they tend to take things off. So their stats are a lot lower. If a player takes their whole armor off, but they leave their stats on, they can have a thousand TS, a thousand total stats. So they'll be bracketed with you in like tier four or five, whatever the thousand TS is. Right? And they could have their extort fams with them. The moment you load into that PVP match, you will die immediately if they have a team of Binertolis on them, or if they have like, anything with extort on them at all you will just get insta wipes so just be very very cautious with that around those tiers because you never know trust me it's very scary so just be very wary on that an In invasion make sure you always put a very very strong team in the front not in the back because i've noticed when i play invasion if my front team dies sometimes the damage from the enemy will continue on to the next team and you don't want your weak team or you don't want your strong team to just get insta wiped at the end you're gonna want as many familiars as possible to fill up your invasion like if it takes nine familiars or however many it takes you fill every spot with a familiar even if it's unstable you want to make sure your full team does not die the moment your disable autopilot on death activates is the moment i recommend you guys just bail just leave that all together it's too risky so just make sure that you have again this checked it's very very important so that's going to be another really good tip whenever invasion comes around so gauntlet is very very scary i recommend whenever you start start off pretty low because at the beginning of the game if you're not used to starting new characters like i am or some other players out there it's very challenging you might think that oh i can just do this pretty easily you will lose if you don't pay attention so be very careful and again, I'm not gonna stress, I can't stress this enough. Make sure this is checked. Trust me, very, very important. It's your best friend. That little check mark right there is your best friend. Um, what else can you do? I recommend saving all gems if possible to just keep buying shard baskets. That's my personal opinion. Um, if you can get a decent pet, like an epic, stick with it. Just just stick with it. Pet or accessory and epic, just stick with it. You want to have as much experience as possible. That way you can level up and in my opinion the raid method is the best method because you get so so much experience and you have so many runs just to run on raid so that's my personal opinion i would just get those um you can always get invasion uh badges for invasion but that's entirely up to you i'm going to be going with raid because i can get some fantastic gear fantastic familiars with a decent amount of experience and item find along with it so it's going to be very, very great. Let's go ahead and show you real quick. Go to heroic. You see here 400 item find and capture rate. So it's going to have item find and capture rate, which is honestly what I really want. I want to get really strong familiars. So that will carry you to the very end. All right. And when you start the beginning of your venture, you will be a very, very low level and you will start off with, I believe only 101 energy. I'm not too sure on what you start off with, but you start off with very little energy. And every time you level up, you add one energy to your energy bar, but not just that your energy bar will completely refill. So what do I recommend you do? I do believe the initial boost comes with gold find and capture rate. Trust me when I say this, do not pop any experience boost at all at the beginning. And you're probably thinking why I'm trying to level up as fast as I can, get as high as level as a level as I can. Why would I not want to pop an experience boost? Well, the reason you don't want to pop an experience boost is because if you keep leveling up too fast at the beginning, you're not going to take full advantage of your full energy bar. You want to get as little experience as possible. You can keep running to farm the familiars you want on day one and two, if possible, um, and just keep farming and farming and farming and farming. And the moment you get your familiars stabled, you'll be able to just proceed on with the experience um, tombs, and you'll be able to, you know, pretty much get the same amount of distance with 
better familiars from the start you won't be leveling up too much you won't have to worry about your regen charging up and this is for free to players by the way you want to make sure that you do not use any experience boost at the beginning of the game that's what i do and i do fantastic i'm able to get a pangs and i'm able to get a max shramps sometimes a max stable dryad right off the bat which in my opinion are very very strong at the beginning of the game if you want to check this out real quick go to the familiars here dryad is dryad so check this out you can just max stable a dryad and you already have a deals damage to all enemies and it heals target a one and two sp very solid not even a fusion um if you want to go down the fusion route of course don't blame you come down here to pangs pangs is very very strong they have a decent amount of speed i recommend making pangs but if you don't want to waste time with pangs i totally get it but just think about this pangs can go into other familiars that are very strong like korgs or like um Panguita, so that's entirely up to you i really doubt anyone will get that far as free to play um within two weeks but if you can that's great honestly that's awesome what else do i recommend yobo seems hard for two weeks only because of the sprockets um shramps shramps is very very solid of course shramps is probably going to be your go-to tank for a long time um borlin is not to be slept on borlin is very very important and the reason for that is because their heals just go extremely unmatched at the beginning of the game until you can get dulag or blinka um for shielding borlin is very very strong like just look at look at that spread heal amount it's insane. it's pretty good the only problem with Borland is he's very squishy and he tends to be the reason that your team will lose. So you have to be very careful with Borland, especially because his health is extremely low. At my TS, he is literally at 9,000 health. The average bait that I have, go to a bait real quick. Go to my go-to bait right now. It's going to be Ignatus Raw. Let's just use Ignatus Raw as, a, as an example. Ignatus Raw is 16,000. So that just shows you how low of HP Borlin actually has so just be careful with Borlin he's very very scary to use if you don't want to use someone as squishy as Borlin you could always look at the other familiars that are going to be coming up sometimes you don't even need to make a fusion to find a really good healer I know Naman is pretty good I love using Naman but their heal is a 2 SP but they do have a deals damage to all enemies which pairs very well with an offensive or heal when you hit brain very very solid crit chance is also very hard to get on a familiar stacks very well with empower and if you want dual strike so naman is another great familiar that's also easy to get at the beginning of the game that i highly recommend looking into personally when i first started i didn't really look up any guides this is who i made and i got very very far with nam so this was a very solid pick for me and i still recommend them okay so the shop I'm not too sure on how the shop is going to look. As a free to play, the only thing I recommend doing is trying your best and only if you can, trying your best to get a accessory that's around epic material or a very good rare. It's very hard to find a good rare, but a good rare would be something like um, if you're a tank, damage reduction, because it doesn't have to be stacked for a higher percent chance, it's just automatically applied damage reduction is what you're going to want to go for when it comes to being a tank trust me it's going to be your best option only because it's your safest option again this is for free to plays damage reduction is going to be the best thing you can possibly do block is nice but if you can't stack that 100 percent block and you get unlucky you're going to get nuked out and it's just going to waste your energy and waste your experience so damage reduction is what you want to aim for if you're looking at an offensive accessory let's go to gear here go to offensive you're going to want to get an epic at least if possible i mean a rare at least if possible you're gonna want empower chance or dual strike or a bunch of small stuff like this one has personally if you can get something with crit chance that'd be nice but it seems very low um on the epic category if you can get something <laughs> as awesome as the mystic amulet frog that would be insane for you or something strong like suave backpack that would also be great but it really just depends on what you're able to roll what do i recommend buying not these that's for sure only recommend saving all of your gems and buying when they're discounted i know it could come late but if you can get a discounted price you have more chances of rolling if you're able to stack more gems by the time they come out if you can roll a fantastic um, accessory you can get very very far now what do i recommend honestly going dps is always a lot easier if you are a tank 
player, consider going bait at the beginning of the game. It will help your team out tremendously. What do I recommend on World Boss? World Boss, I recommend something extremely easy, something that won't wipe your team completely. So let's check out the familiars here real quick. I'm going to go to Fusion and I'm going to type in Juice real quick just to see all of these familiars that are going to pop up. So these are familiars that you fight in World Boss if you're going to Netherworld. I'm going to click on Rarzok. They have Deflect Chance. That already is scary. I like looking at the abilities that they have. If they have anything multi-hit like this, Drain Health from All Enemies, very dangerous. There's a chance they can just wipe your whole team out if you're playing. I'm not too sure if you can play with other people in World Boss. I'm not too entirely sure, but if you are able to play with people in World Boss, which I will get clarification for and leave an answer in the comments below, then um, you will... This is very devastating, so just be careful. Um, let's go ahead and check out Drazig. Now, Drazig is a very hard-hitting familiar. As you can see here, their damage is insanely high. It's already more than double of what Borland was doing, so it's it's crazy. Um, this is just his one SP. He can hit pretty fast, as you see. His speed is very decent, um, but he doesn't have any multi-hits, so he's not insane. He doesn't have any dual strike either. Let's go ahead and go down to Ragmar. Ragmar has crit chance. He hits even harder, and he does have a he does have a random hit so that's pretty devastating if you face ragmar he does have that 60 percent crit chance which is very strong he also has a 2 sp which is not too much deals damage to all enemies if he crits your whole team that's just a loss for you so ragmar is instantly the scariest threat you're gonna have in my opinion for um nether but let's not just stop there let's look at everyone here not too sure if Omo's there, but Omo, Omo does have dual strike and he does have damage to closest to enemies. If he dual strikes that, your team's probably dead, depending on your, your setup. Wingo, or sorry, Clavid. Clavid has empowered chance, so there's no dual strike here. He does not have multiple enemies, so he's fine. Dorgim, let's check them out. They don't have multiple enemies, that's fine. Um, Ergos, they do not have multiple enemies and they are blocked chance. I don't think accounts yeah jug doesn't have juice so those are the familiars there nothing pretty devastating until you see ragmar or omo so just be very wary demon here let's see demon i'm not sure if demon's there but demon does have does not have multi-hit so demon is fine as well the scariest threats again ragmar and omo now let's go ahead and go on to the or lag foot yes foot Let's check them out real quick. So to start right off, we'll go with Gorlag. Gorlag is going to be more of a tanky familiar, very slow, but they do have a drain health from all enemies, one SP, which is pretty devastating. They also have a damage to all enemies. Um, I highly recommend Gorlag or Orlag world boss because you can have more people on your team, making it harder for them to completely wipe you. Um, so this is a definitely the safer option. However, I believe the familiars in the other world boss are stronger and a little easier to make if you are able to get those. But that doesn't mean that these don't have a really good familiar. We'll be going on to Velk here in a little bit so that I'll go over. Torlag here. Torlag has crit chance and empower chance, so they hit extremely hard. They also have a deals damage to all enemies with a decent amount of speed. He is probably your biggest threat in this whole area. He's a very, very strong familiar that honestly is insane. So just be careful with Torlag. Go down a little bit. So Meaty, you don't have anything to worry about with Meaty. Just a meat shield. Go ahead and go down to Velk. Velk is the one exception in this world boss where I recommend you do this world boss and you make this familiar. Velk is extremely, extremely phenomenal if you're able to get this familiar. They can easily be your bait, your DPS, your support. They can do it all. They have really great stats and their HP is low enough to bait for you if you're a DPS. So Velk is very, very strong. 22.5 in power chance is insane. Their skills are pretty nice. They have a damage closest, zero SP, a one SP spread heal teammates, which is insane, very strong, especially because it's a spread heal and not a heal team. And they have a deals damage to target enemy. That is very, very solid when you're trying to take out any bosses in the game. Garrick. Garrick here is going to be a tanky familiar, nothing to worry about. They do have closest to enemies, but nothing insane. 
Let's check out Drek. Drek has crit chance, very scary, but no multi hit. We're fine there. Very slow familiar as well. And let's go with Tilge or Tilgy, whatever, however you say his name. 15% in power chance. They do not have multi hit, so they're nothing to really worry about, but they can easily pick someone off. Just be careful. Their speed is pretty high. They're probably one of the fastest on or lag side if i'm not mistaken yeah it's looking like that i don't think anyone faster than yeah so he will be your fastest guy on the if you do see that someone in your team is just constantly done probably just picking them off with his precision shot so just keep an eye out for tilji and make sure you get rid of him if you already got rid of someone like tor lag also gold gold is very 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 important so like i was saying before i do recommend having auto persuade off and that's because gold is going to help you get oh so many things so you're going to want to go to the smithy go to craft and you can see here that gold will help you make epic material if you need to make epic material gold will help you get gold will help you make runes and runes are very very expensive so just looking here at a legendary rune starting price 500,000 gold 1 million gold for these triangle runes 1.5 million gold they're insane for a mount 500k for a legendary for augments 100k which is not too bad for any legendary pumps 250k for any skeletal lining and that's another thing here i highly recommend not making legendary skeletal lining and the reason is because mythic ones cost the same so if you are able are able at all to make any mythic anything i recommend making a mythic bone because that is the same price pump wise as the legendary so that's what i recommend i on, i honestly only recommend getting the epics because they're the only bang for your buck uh, skeletal lining to get this is just too expensive across the board i highly highly recommend getting epic skeletal linings and legendary pumps if possible you could always get epic pumps but if you're going for block chance or anything that's percentage based and not like a guarantee like damage reduction is you're going to want to get legendary pumps to help max those that's another tip there do not do not use your gold and energy conversion to make zeals and shards it is the absolute worst thing you can do in this event you need to farm everything possible get as many familiars as possible that you can to help you on your journey you're going to need as many attempts in the dungeons to begin with to even do that so do not do this at all it is highly highly um it's, it's, it's just it's a terrible idea the only time and this is important the only time you will ever convert energy is if you have a lot of energy you're about to level up like this. You see how I'm about to level up? Let's say I was a level seven or something. One, one, one mission will easily max me out. If you're about to level up and for some reason your energy is super full because you've just been farming like crazy, but your energy is going way too fast. That's when you could shard stack. You shard stack only if you have like a hundred plus energy and you know you can't farm it all before it refreshes. That's when you shard stack. Only if you're able to get that level up to guarantee your energy refill is when you shard stack. And that's only if you cannot finish that energy stack. So those are the only exceptions for shard stacking. But just keep in mind, 5k gold doesn't sound like a lot. But if you keep doing it, it adds up. Just like I did with the world boss, you will want to look into the familiars for raid. I'll just check out Astaroth real quick. Astaroth is going to have... This right here, drain health from all enemies. They are fairly fast, very large amount of health, decent damage. So they're very scary when you get to them. If you wanted to check out any of the epic raid familiars, just go down to the epic portion here. And they're all listed right here. We have Ragnar starting off. Ragnar is more of a tanky fan, but he does have attack closest too. There is no bonuses and the speed is terrible. No worries about Ragnar at all. We can check out Shade here. Shade is a little <laughs> different. Shade is probably going to be your main priority when you're taking them out in raid. I highly, highly recommend um, taking them out first because they do have a deals damage to all enemies. They have decent speed 
decent damage and it's a one sp so it's very scary to go against the shade since they are very devastating and for the last one squib squib is pretty strong as you can see here and decently fast but very squishy so they can be popped really quickly um, if you check out their moves they do have a deals damage to all enemies however it is a 3 sp and a little harder for them to pretty much use that um, but just know that you are going to be using your total stats so your team is going to be pretty much as strong as you are if not weaker so just know that they could probably have enough time to stack that up just be very careful but that's pretty much going to be it for the hardcore speedrun challenge if you guys have any questions leave it in the comments below if you guys just want to tell me how you guys are doing on your event, you can feel free to leave it down there as well. I'm going to be making frequent posts on my YouTube, which is going to be more comment based on my community page. And I will be trying to upload as much as possible, but no guarantees. I'll try to do some small snippets of my updates on my hardcore character. But yeah, if I were you, go check out Bidverse Andy's video so you don't mess anything up with registration and you guys know exactly what's going on. Thanks so much for stopping by. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace.